AB5 was just signed into law in California. Is that going to have any impact on drivers and other gig economy workers in upstate New York and other small markets? Let's talk about that. So it's September 18th, 2019, and AB5 is now law in California. Uber and Lyft are going to continue to fight this, and already we're starting to see repercussions across the country when it comes to this. Um, there was a protest in New York City recently. Seattle is now um, looking at passing a law regarding rideshare drivers and other gig economy workers. How is that going to affect those of us in upstate New York and small markets? Well, I think immediately it's not going to affect us. But what we're going to start seeing are features rolling out that are intended, I think, to make rideshare drivers, especially those working for Uber and Lyft, um, not appear like employees. And so maybe that'll give us a little bit more flexibility. I doubt it, but we'll have to see. When I opened up my Lyft app, I had to accept the new terms of service. And one of the clauses that was covered had to deal with litigation and suing Lyft. So they're starting to make changes to their driver agreements. They want to prevent any future lawsuits. And unfortunately, this is the way these things go. There's a terms of service. We have to accept it in order to use their platform. And we have no way of recourse. We have no way of saying, hey, here are my terms of service, Lyft, in, in order for me to work for you which is why we're not really independent contractors. I also don't think we're employees either. We're somewhere in between, and there probably needs to be some kind of new classification that comes up with that. I think for the time being, things are going to be pretty much status quo. Maybe we'll even start seeing some pay increases as well. I actually happen to notice today in my Uber app, one of the promotions, that the promotion amounts for three consecutive rides are going up. Um, last week they were around $3 to $4, uh, and now we're starting to see over $7 and $8 for consecutive, uh, uh, three consecutive rides. So that's a good thing. Whether or not that continues, I have no idea. I'd also like to see more features added to the apps that allow us to control which rides we take. The new Uber Pro system I think is great, but there's really no direct financial attachment to it, to maintaining a low cancellation rate, to maintaining um, a high acceptance rate. So it would be nice if in the future we could start seeing more financial incentive tied to those statistics. If Uber wants us to cancel fewer rides and accept more rides, it should be directly tied to how much I earn as a driver. Make it a bonus. Accept uh, a number of rides, certain number of rides in a row, and get a $100 bonus. There are lots of various things that they could do. Kind of shooting from the hip in this video. I apologize for that. I'm going to wrap things up. Those are my thoughts. Please share your thoughts with me. Honestly, I'm new to this game. My name is John from RideUpState.com. And remember, just because you're in a small market doesn't mean you have to settle for small profits.